Good afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for being here today. I'm James Lemon. I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees for the Medical University of South Carolina. I'd like to recognize my fellow board member, Dr. Bart Witherspoon, who's an oncologist and colleague of mine. Since becoming governor, Governor McMaster has focused on many key issues, including economic development, maximizing the potential of our colleges and universities, particularly our research universities, and supporting innovations in health care. As you may know, MUSC is one of the two centers of telehealth excellence in the nation, and this could not have been done without legislative support and government McMaster support and prioritization. Hail for its ability to erase the distance between health care providers in cities and patients in rural areas. Telehealth has ironically enabled medical care to continue, including increased COVID testing in a time when we must all keep our distance in this pandemic. Additionally, Governor McMaster's attention continues to be with coastal areas in our state, cities like Charleston that are impacted by increasing water levels. As an example, telehealth like telehealth, the governor appointed the governor's flood water commission last year. It shows his dedication in getting out in front of the issues that affect our state. Governor, we appreciate your leadership and support for MUSC and appreciate you being here today to sign Senate Bill 259, the Disaster Relief and Resilience Act. Please join me in welcoming Governor McMaster. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Chairman, it is a pleasure to be here on behalf of five million proud, happy South Carolinians. Uh, this is a beautiful day at this great institution. We've got le great leadership, and of course, everything that Dr. Lemon mentioned could not be done without all the talent that we have in this state working together. I, I believe our state is unique, and I hear it from people around the world who are looking to invest hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, they want to come to South Carolina for a lot of reasons, but the main one is the people, the strength the, and the determination and the talent of the people. So we're loaded, and a lot of those are, are here with us today that took part in, in making this day a, a reality. Uh, we've had a lot of floods. Uh, we're lucky to live on the water. Sometimes we have too much of it, but that's temporary. What we need to do is be sure that we are resilient that we, can, we don't need to fight the water, we need to learn to lift with the water. We need to make the water our companion, our friend, and let it work for us. We have people coming from all over the world that want to come. Again, Charleston, according to the magazines, again is the number one uh, attraction of the, of the smaller cities in the country outside of New York and Chicago and those in the country. Again, I think for about the sixth year in a row in Greenville, I think, is popped up to about number four, number six. So we are, we are really on the top of the world. We have everything that we need, especially is the talent of the people. So we have to make this place that we call paradise. The explorers said this was paradise and they were right, but we need to be sure that we can live here. One thing we tried to do, uh, Doctor and Doctor Cawley and Lemon, was to put $10 million in that budget for that uh, spring fishman drainage project. We go get that done next year with the help of people who are here today. But this is about the Flood Water Commission and the resilience of our state. And I'm delighted that we had the opportunity to work together again on this project. The project, the Flood Water Commission was headed by Tom Mulliken, who will speak in a minute. And as a part of that, Stephen Goldfinch put in the Senate bill that led to a fund to compensate and to take the, those areas that are in danger uh, out of danger by allowing the people to have the money to, to resist that and move to other places. So we are in a great place here in South Carolina. Again, it's because of the talent we have. Every day in South Carolina is a great day, and I promise you that from where, where I am, from where I see, and I think you'll agree the best is yet to come. Senator Goldfinch. Thank you, Governor. About five years ago, I don't think I knew what the word resilience in the, in the context of flooding meant. And today, there's not one of us here that doesn't know what that means. And that speaks volumes to the education 
and to the importance of what this bill is and has done over the course of the last two years. I'd like to begin by thanking everybody that was involved in the process, especially my wife and my kids who heard me on the phone day and night, night and day for the last two years, but also every member here that participated in the, in the debate and in the process, especially Representative Crawford on the House side. Uh, this was a challenge, it was a task, it was a monumental task legislative task, but we got it done because we've got a great team working towards one common unified goal. South Carolina is a unique place in that we have to figure out this balance between nature and, and humanity. And we've done that well over the course of the last couple hundred years, but just in the last few years we've seen that balance upset. We've seen the balance skewed in one direction or another. Just last year, two years ago, I met a woman named Linda in the Sacristy community. Representative Crawford knows her well. I was helped cleaning out her house. She had been flooded five times in the last five years and was destined to stay there because she could not afford the 25% match, FEMA match, to get her out of the flood zone. We, as taxpayers and the government, forced her to stay there because she didn't have the ability to get out. Not only that, we paid for her to stay there by fixing her home over and over and over again. The way we thanked her was to stay right there in that home and to continue to get flooded. Ladies and gentlemen, I found that to be abhorrent. I found that to be abhorrent. But today I stand here and tell you we have done something about it. Not only is this a win for the ecosystem and returning lands that should not be, uh, should not have homes on it to, to wetlands, this is a win for humanity. And I'm proud to be here with the team that got it accomplished. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, legislative members. I am so honored to be a part of this team. And I'd like to, to now introduce Representative Crawford, who was instrumental on the House side. Thank you, Senator Goldfinch. Um, thank you first to Governor McMaster for having the foresight to establish the South Carolina Floodwater Commission following Hurricane Florence. Um, it has been an honor to serve on that commission and I thank you, Governor, for recognizing the need for this commission and also recognizing the diversity that we have. The issues that Charleston has with flooding are different than the issues that Horry County has with flooding. And even in the district that I represent in Sacristy, it's different than some of the issues we have with flooding in the western part of Horry County. So this commission has really allowed us to research and dig in to find some solutions that help address our flooding needs around South Carolina. Uh, thankfully, Governor McMaster chose Tom Mulliken to chair this South Carolina Floodwater Commission. And Governor, that was one of the best things you've ever done. Um, Tom certainly is knowledgeable in this field. And Tom, I thank you for your tireless work over the last few years on helping us to address this. Um, I also want to thank Senator Goldfinch for his leadership in the Senate. We also have a couple of other members here today because Senator Goldfinch and I did not do this alone. Um, we have Representative Stavernakis, we have Representative Cogswell, Senator Sin, and the entire General Assembly for helping us get this over the finish line. So Senate 259 is really going to enable the improvements to coordinate disaster response and recovery efforts in South Carolina. I cannot describe to you what it is like to watch the river take and consume your home. Unfortunately, many of my neighbors and constituents that I represent understand that feeling. Uh, several of them, as Senator Goldfinch spoke about, just one, Linda, whose home has flooded five times in about five years, and we have been there to help her muck out that home and, and move on with that process. It is a very grueling process. It is tough. It's very emotionally and mentally, financially, fiscally draining, and it is something that, unfortunately, I know personally and have lived through with um, many of my neighbors throughout the years with these increased rain events. So this legislation is very important. Thank you all so much. This is just 
one product of the South Carolina Floodwater Commission. I look forward to our continued work together as we continue to address these issues. And with that, I will hand it over to my chairman, Chairman Mulliken. Thank you. Tuesday, October 13th, remember this date because this is a very important date. This is what leadership looks like. We're no longer in Columbia talking about what we're gonna do. We have a governor who's making things happen. And with these great legislators that are here today and the many of you who served on this commission, this is not insignificant. For 40 years, nearly 40 years, I'd looked at these issues that we're examining now and I said if they got any worse, I was gonna pull my hair out. Well, my hair is gone, but I'm growing a little out here because I see progress. And I want to say that so much of what we need is what Governor McMaster is bringing to our state, and particularly with this issue. The first step is more than one. We've had people talk about these issues for decades, but what we've seen with Governor McMaster, his insistence on doing something, and you hear him talk about coordination, collaboration, and communication. This cannot be stressed enough. We have mounds of quantitative natural research, and we have very little social conviction. That's a qualitative issue, and it's centered on those three words. We've seen across the state as we've come together, starting when the governor created this commission by giving everybody a lunch bucket and telling them we're going to work, and we went to work. I remember the first event we had was down here in Charleston. We planted sweet grass as part of our living shoreline and the governor was out there planting sweet grass. And then we went to Marion County and cleaned two and a half miles of canal in the hot summer with these same members and members of Congress and other South Carolinians. This is what government should look like. A commission of 82 people of very diverse backgrounds and views coming together and finding those issues that they can agree, can, they can agree upon. And so let me tell you that as we move forward, we created that 450 page report and I thought my job was over. So I picked a good time to go visit with the governor around Christmas because I thought this was going to be it for me. And I took the report. We were proud of it. Gave it to the governor and said, thank you for letting me serve you. And I think his exact words are, oh, no, Tomcat. Oh no, get the band back together. We're just, we're just getting started. And that's what we're doing now. We will put down our first artificial reef that will become a part of an internet, uh, underwater internet system that will, that will measure wave attenuation and other, other very important marine issues on Friday. We're cleaning ditches. Heather and I and Stephen and the mayor, we've been door to door with people. If you have a, a problem and you call me, I'm coming to your house. If you call me late, I'll call you back late. This governor wants to see action, and that's what this is about. We have brought a diverse group together under the tremendous leadership of the greatest governor in my lifetime, and I'm excited to continue to serve him. And I know that with this and what's coming, South Carolina will assume and maintain a position of global leadership. So thanks to all of you who came out to the legislators, to the mayor, to everyone else who's been a part of this, and governor, most especially thanks to you for all you've done in creating this tremendous leadership position. It's my pleasure and honor now to introduce Laura Contrell, the executive director of the Coastal Conservation League, who will speak on this same issue. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Tom. My name is Laura Cantrell. I'm the executive director of the Coastal Conservation League. And like others, I'm very excited for this day and I'm excited to be here. You know, I'm always proud to be a resident of South Carolina, but today I'm feeling that pride even more deeply. I'm here representing my organization, the Coastal Conservation League, but I feel confident that my remarks reflect the overwhelming gratitude of our partners, including Audubon, South Carolina, the Southern Environmental Law Center, the Pew Charitable Trust, and the South Carolina Wildlife Federation. All of these groups worked alongside the state leaders, leaders here today, um, to get us all here to make this day happen. There are many people to thank for getting this bill over the finish line and during a global pandemic, something that many people thought was impossible. But here we are. The following individuals, the individuals who are standing here, um, 
looked into the not so distant future and saw soggy, economically devastated communities and said, not in my state, not on my watch. Governor McMaster had the foresight to create the Floodwater Commission as South Carolina faced unprecedented flooding due to more frequent and intense storms. Tom Mulliken just stepped up to chair the commission, which brings experts together and facilitates solution-based problem solving, which gets out in the field and cleans things up. The commission is a collaborative effort and was the first step on the path that got us where we are today. Senator Stephen Goldfinch, Representative Heather Crawford, the leaders that are standing here behind me today, others who couldn't join us were uh, important in leading the charge in Columbia. Thank you all for your tireless advocacy and dedication to making South Carolina a leader in statewide resilience planning and preparation. Today is a day for the families who can now worry less about the next storm and the potential damage it will do for their homes, who can feel hopeful that the land that they love will not wash away, and feel comforted that the plants and animals that we all know and love and cherish will continue to thrive here. Today, we can imagine a bright future because we did something to make it better. Today is a day for us all to celebrate. Thank you, Governor McMaster. Now we will sign the bill. Yes, the resilience office with the chief resilience officer will be involved in those things, but also and importantly, the office will be concerned and determined to find solutions to prevent flooding. As Mr. Mulliken mentioned there, we have ditches and culverts and all sorts of things around the state that over the years have been ignored and forgotten. And we spent some time in Marion County cleaning out there with a lot of volunteers. It's made an enormous difference, just something that small. So we're, we're looking to, to avoid problems, to resolve them before they happen, and to take care, take care of nature, and also, particularly with, as uh, Senator Goldfinch mentioned, for those people who are in harm's way and, and need, need to go, this will help them as well. More questions? Let you want to say something? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey, Trip King. Thank you very much. Anything else? Who's the Well, we've got a host of very talented South Carolinians who would be perfect for such a position. And I imagine there'd be a lot of people. Tom, 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 Tom Mullikins, <laughs> he's pretty busy on a number of projects, and I'm getting ready to put another one on him as well. <laughs> But well, thank you very much. Appreciate y'all coming. Governor, thank you. This is good.